Hey guys, uh, I have a wall tent from walltentshop.com or actually from the Canadian site, but uh, they give you these angles to build uh, your pole setup and you have to go buy the lengths of conduit from Home Depot or wherever and cut it all to length. I did that, I actually had this tent for over a year. I did that shortly after I got it. Um, but one thing I find is when you set it up, especially if you're by yourself, is the poles always fall out of these angles. And when you're trying to get one side up, the poles are falling out of the other side and makes it really tough to do it by yourself. So uh, I came up with an idea to put in um, little buttons that would hold the uh, poles into the angle pieces, kind of like you see with, uh, you know, aluminum paddles or, you know, some tents have them on their poles and stuff. So I actually found from China, I ordered a bag of these um, little wires with a button on them. And you stick that inside the tube after you drill a hole and you end up with this. So you have to depress the button to make it go past that point. So what I did is I figured out that these things are not all the same. Some of them have a much deeper pocket than other ones. So I was thinking, well, if I try to have it the same distance from the end on all of them, then I have to get the exact right lengths to go in these. I'd have to mark them all and it'd be a bunch of screwing rounds. Then it occurred to me, I, I can just measure from the bottom up, same distance each time. So what I did is I figured out, you know, this angle piece here is about two inches long. So I have to be out further than that. Um, and then I figured out what the shortest one was. And uh, long story short, it worked out that if I set them all three inches off bottom, then I can make them all the same. So what I did is I, I took on this pole and I marked one, two, three, four, five on there. And when I put this in, I can see um, where the mark is on here. Then I take my ruler and say the four is showing. I can measure one inch in from the four and mark that. And then I know that's three inches off the bottom. So I went through all of these and I marked them three inches off the bottom. Some of them are a lot deeper. As you can see this one, I had to mark down two inches from it to find the three. So I've got them all marked three inches from the bottom. Um, so I went through, through them and did that. And now I'm putting them in the vise one at a time. And I take my punch and I'm trying to get when it's, uh, in the middle of a piece, it doesn't have a brace on it. I'm trying to go right dead in the center because you got to remember that if I put a button on this side of the pole and a button on this side of the pole, I'm going to have to make sure that they're exactly lined up. Otherwise I might hit the hole on one angle iron and be off to the side on the other one. So I'm doing these all exactly the same so that they work out when I put them together. So here I'm putting them right dead center of the brace. And because I have to drill a pilot hole, I've got two drills set up here. One is my smaller pilot. And then this one, I'm actually making the holes quite a bit bigger um, than they need to be to allow for a little bit of wiggle room. It doesn't have to be tight. So when you put them together, you know, this one here, the hole is just the right size. When you put them together, it falls into the hole. And, you know, even if it's not perfect, it's got a little bit of wiggle room there. So that'll hold all my poles together. And I should be able to easily set the tent up and take it down by myself without having the darn poles fall out on me. So let's drill this one. to the next piece.
punch it and make sure I'm lined up with the brace. Are you helping, Riley? He's excited to go camping this weekend. That's another piece done. So I gotta go through all of these and do that. And then I have to get all my poles out and measure them exactly three inches up, exactly the same spot on each end, and drill all those and insert the little springs. So just figured I'd show how I did that. Uh, these actually were somewhat expensive. I uh, got them off AliExpress actually, um, with shipping and everything came out to about 50 bucks and I got maybe a dozen extras or so. So they're, they, yeah, they were fairly expensive, but I mean, you think of the cost of the tent um, for 50 bucks to have this problem solved and then make it a little bit more usable, it was definitely worth it. So, so one other thing I'm going to do is just quickly run a file over these because some of them do have a bit of a sharp edge on them. And uh, don't want to end up with a rip on your thumb or something when you're out camping. So I have a burr on the inside too, you can see there, but. I think the pole will take that off when I put it in. So I'll go through these. So I actually decided I'm going to go through and just run the pole inside to break those burrs because I don't want them on top of the nice vinyl floor once the tent's set up. Here is my idea for how I'm going to mark these all on the top. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to line them all up. Make sure they're all good. So 
So three inches would put us out there. So let's mark the first one. Let's mark the last one. I'm just going to go slowly so that I get the center of each one of these. Okay, so now as long as we don't roll these, we should be able to get the next So the legs are the medium length ones and we only need to put a hole in one side of those. So we'll do the short ones here. The short ones there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So those are the length pieces for the side and the ridge. Mark three inches on the outside one. So that's right in the center. That's still right in the center. I mean, they don't have to be perfect to the thousandth of an inch, but let's just go like this. So I did a pretty good job cutting these. They're all almost exactly the same length. Okay, so now we have to do the long pieces, which are the ones that run up to the ridge. should save a lot of time trying to do each one individually. So now I'm going to tap and drill these. So this first one was the one that was my measuring stick. So I had to do it special because I didn't have that line straight up when I marked all the pieces over there. But now oh, I'm going to check. And this is the right size bit. I don't know if I changed it or not. Oh, that looks perfect. Okay. So, let me take this little guy. The first one went in really easy. Get the burr from drilling. This 
Straße in die Küche. He's done. <laughs> All, right. All right. So the legs, we only need to do one side. There's my mark. The legs were the hardest one, too, setting it up because as soon as you put the pieces together, And then you put the top pieces on up to the ridge. <clears throat> no, you, you, build, you build the ridge first, the whole roof basically. And then you try to put one leg in and then you move over putting the legs in. And by the time you get to this side, the leg on that side will fall out. And the same thing when you get to, uh, you put your canvas on, then you're doing your final side. Same thing then, it was a pain in the butt going out this weekend. Looking forward to seeing how much easier this is. This might be easier for used pliers. Yeah, that one went in easy. All right, last one. This is the leg, so we only have the one. really easy to install with your hand once you kind of figure it out. <clears throat> so another thing I did with these, you'll see I've got, uh, I just took a hacksaw and there's two marks there. All of them have either one, two or three marks. So um, you can uh, easily figure out which pieces you need when you're putting it together. And I didn't use paint, I used the marks because you can even feel them if you're setting up in the dark. And after it's together, you don't see it, that's inside the joint. Not that that matters, but. So, yeah, got buttons on all of them now. Cool.